Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, we have a team of two speakers, Craig Peliquin and Dennis Wilson. Craig Peliquin was a magician and clown for nearly a decade in his late teens and early 20s. In the mid-90s, he entered the direct sales industry and enjoyed a decade of exceptional success. Then he became a LinkedIn expert and wrote a book about how to use this platform for maximum impact. Dennis Wilson has started several multi-million dollar companies and has, self and has helped launch and mentor over 700 companies in 30 different countries in multiple languages with a total turnover of over $1.4 billion in revenue. Members of the audience, if you have any questions, please type them into the chat. And uh, at a lull in uh, Craig and Dennis's presentation, I will pose your questions to them. The video recording will be launched uh, tomorrow. Uh, so if you don't want to take notes, you don't have to. Craig and Dennis, at least Craig, are you ready? Ready to go, Roger. Take it away. She's all yours. Thanks so much. Well, everybody, hey, it's great to be here. Um, you're going to see a, a back and forth approach with Dennis and I. Uh, we, we, we've done this presentation a few times on Zoom, but it's the first time here with Vancouver Business Network. We're really excited to share with you five secrets why most salespeople struggle with CRM. And heck, we still struggle with it. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it's not something you ever really totally master. There's always something new going on. So who are we? Just so you understand, we're with Small Business Dream. Uh, we are the number one, uh, one touch and done, lead generation, forever follow up and convert to a client CRM. And we come complete with custom content specific to each industry. Uh, we've got verticals that we work in, like Delivery Biz Connect specific to restaurants or sort of Main Street companies that need to survive COVID by delivering to their customers. Realty Biz Connect for the realtors in the audience. Um, and uh, Car Biz Connect, we've actually got a, a trial going on with Nissan right now, uh, looking to push that through uh, all of Canada by early of next year. So it's... Um, Oh yeah, RV Biz Connect. Uh, again, turns out there was nobody attacking the vertical of RVs. So we spun up a vertical and partnered with some people that really know the industry well. So our claim to fame is we take small business dream, the back end CRM, and we build verticals on top of it by partnering with uh, experts in particular industries and then fitting the CRM directly to that industry and then deploying uh, into all kinds of places. Right. Now, Dennis, I mean, this is you in front of uh, almost a thousand uh, business owners in Barcelona. Yeah, when we uh, were allowed to fly <laughs> yeah, yes. and be in airports. I miss my airports. <laughs> yes, this was uh, actually uh, about a thousand people in Barcelona, uh, all small business owners, uh, fairly high content of real estate agents, uh, coaches, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we just went in and we showed them uh, almost similar to what we're going to talk about today was basically what we shared with them and just showed people how to kickstart using uh, CRM, using, not buying, not looking at, not investigating, not comparing, pick one and use it. Exactly. And, uh, you know, as you heard my background, I did write a book on LinkedIn. Dennis, there's your small business profitability secrets, a bunch of really cool uh, stories about how you implemented CRM in many different verticals. Yes. So to maximize your value in this Zoom today, we're going to assume that you use or have access to, because you may not use it, <laughs> a CRM. <laughs> and what's the best CRM, Dennis? The best CRM is one you use. So we find that small business owners and solopreneurs and coaches get so tied up into which one's better or I need to find the free one or I need to find the cheap one. No, you need to find someone that is gonna have enough support built around it to help you engage with it. So if you're looking to just go and download the cheapest one, do that and you'll be exactly where you are right now. And in a year, you'll still be there. And in another year, you'll probably still be there. And it's not the software's fault, it's your fault. So if that's the, the cycle or pattern that you're in, look at trying to find one that offers some done for you stuff or has some actual attaching themselves to you to force you to implement. 
Okay, so the one you use is the key. It is. So we're gonna we're gonna just highlight the five secrets right now to the CRM struggles that we have seen over the years that we have been using CRM and and we've been I mean heck the very first CRM you built you built yourself Dennis for, yeah. for your own follow up because I didn't have one. That's right. There was nothing good online. There was nothing that worked. I built it myself in PHP. When I eventually started a software company and shared it with my guys, they were as kind as they could be, and they're like does this actually work? So I obviously wasn't a programmer, but fortunately now I've surrounded myself by really good ones. But the one of the biggest, biggest, biggest struggles is failure to launch. While I'm putting my data in, heard someone say that, but I don't think I'm using it right. Well, if you're putting your data in and it's not immediately triggering an email and putting them into a forever follow-up series, we have some interesting things to help you do today that are not very businessy, but they are really good for business. They really are. And then the second struggle is lack of content in your CRM. What do I send? What do I write? You know, what email? How, how do I make it, you know, work? I'm just, just putting stuff inside it because most of them come with generic templates that you need to fill out. And what's even more interesting is most of the generic templates they come with for emails, they make you feel good. You go into lead, you know, going to, you go into MailChimp and they've got all these beautiful, rich, graphically wonderful templates and uh sure you can use them and they make it very easy and um you shouldn't use them anyway we'll get into that more we will i mean and then another one dennis is the resistance to actually putting in your contacts data entry the time i heard it the effort is taken. someone said i use excel and i'm really good at it and i said i'm promising you if i had an hour to rework your excel you would save an hour a day like that so I don't care how good you are at Excel. My machine, I don't need to touch it. I put the person in first. I click a button. Actually, I probably actually click the button when I put them in. I'm done. You still have to go to your Excel, figure out your awesome system. And that's great. And that works. But man, we all fall into that trap. Oh, you know, I'll just do this one by hand because this one's a little different. I'm just going to write this. Email. I mean, you know, I'm just going to. And it's really funny. The time it takes you to write a custom email is the same amount of time it takes to put it into your CRM and have it go. So we're going to share some techniques on getting really efficient with the things you do and trying to fix your mindset a little bit to realize that you're actually often doing the stuff that your CRM needs. You're just not recognizing it. Exactly. And then many people just don't understand what Dude. the CRM can do. We heard that as well. I've got a CRM. I don't think I'm using it to its right. maximum potential. Um, yeah. I want to learn how to do it. Yeah, if you're not dropping them into an email series that goes for three emails and then stays repeating an email until they open it or don't, then dumps them off to a phone call, then puts them into an SMS text follow-up, and then maybe puts out a message on LinkedIn, you're right. You're not using your CRM to its potential. Exactly. And that just leads right into number five. You don't follow up enough. Yeah. you too scared to go and follow up. Heck, our real estate clients, uh, we put them in a forever follow-up but you've got to follow up for at least seven to 13 years because that's the buying cycle in the housing market. That's right. It doesn't have to be hard. We're going to share tips on how you can be a follow-up master without having to go write a million custom emails for every vertical. So let's go look at each of these individually, Dennis. Here we'll we go. Lunch. Here we go. I think I counted what 23 people minus maybe four that are suffering from this problem right here. <laughs> Yeah. Lots of time researching to find the best value CRM. You know what? Just pick one and start using it. And if it sucks, pick another one. But get something and start using it. And in general, free will lead to heartache. Cheap will actually lead to more heartache than free because you paid money to have heartache. Um, paying a little bit of money for a properly done one that has a proper support system without you having to Google and go into forums and try to figure it out on your own can be one of the magic keys to making it work. Being able to jump in and say, hey guys, here's the problem I have. What do I need to do? And having someone being able to help you with that sometimes can be the key to making your CRM work, right? Don't believe me? Salesforce.com, they're a pretty big CRM company. Traction on Japan is a massive success story in Japan or in Vancouver. And all they do is implement Salesforce.com for mid-sized mid, mid companies. 
So understand, you're not alone in going, I don't know what to do with my CRM. There's a bigger industry in teaching people to implement it than there is in actually selling the actual software tool itself. So don't, don't, don't be scared. Don't be scared. Right? So, I mean, you study how to use it. And then you promise yourself, tomorrow you'll begin. I, I, was, I was in one of our clients' uh, pubs, and they have a big sign on the wall. It says, free beer tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow never comes. I will start my data entry tomorrow. Yeah. All right. And this is not a big problem, Dennis. An empty CRM is an empty CRM. And the first part of the problem is you're likely not a copywriter. That's right. Um, you know, so not being a copywriter leads to a whole bunch of problems because it means you're going to make a bunch of emails that nobody's going to open. And then you're going to say the CRM didn't work. No, no. If the CRM delivered the email, it did its job. If you didn't know how to write a headline, that makes someone want to open it, that's on you. Um, so again, when you get into the MailChimps and all the ones with the pre-formatted templates, they don't come with headlines. A few simple little tips, and I think we, do we even give the URLs in this? If not, we'll find them and give them to you. There's some cool little tools that can help you write a headline, right? So you're probably not a CRM sales and marketing automation, sales funnel expert, landing page survey expert. You're, you're probably not all of those things. So why are you expecting to be? Oh, and, and, and you're probably not a graphic artist either. So this is the thing that's really weird about people. I got a CRM, I'm not any of these things, and I wonder why it's not working for me. Right. But what we've learned, Dennis, and we do this all the time, is we gotta get, action supersedes everything. You had t-shirts made that say this. Uh, Gonna warn true. it today. Get it is started so today. Action supersedes everything. You have to do something with the tool to have it give anything back to you. Right. And you don't need to do a lot. We're going nope. to show you some of the things. Now, we did talk about lack of CRM content. And most people overcomplicate what they need to start. And they got, okay, I need to have all these emails written for the next 17 years before I can push the button. That's not right, is it, Dennis? No. You need to simplify and try to knock off the biggest things. So if every single person you get in that you currently take the time to manually send an email saying, great meeting you yesterday, thanks for your time, blah, 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 blah. Instead of doing that, you took the time to write an email that would work, one email that would work, that you can then put them into a series where it automatically triggers when you enter it, all of a sudden, that email that you do custom for everybody, maybe two times a day, maybe five times a week, doesn't have to be done anymore. So you just take a little bit of time to say, hang on, I'm doing something over and over and over. Let's just put it into the system and then get in the habit of always putting your data into the system. So you can't overcomplicate it. You need, I think the next slide tells us what you need. Here you go. You need at least one follow-up email because if you're going to do a timed series of emails, why do you need more than one if you're not putting data in? Make one, make one today. That means you took five minutes today. Maybe you took 30 minutes today. Maybe it's a really good email and you did the proper three hours to do a proper email. Get one and get one landing or survey page and we're gonna explain why. This is, the, this is the easiest hack to get the most out of your CRM. You need these two things so that you have an easy way to get people in and plugged into all the automation. The last thing you wanna be doing is, okay, third name, Last name. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now I go over here to my email series and I add them to that series and oh, that's right. Uh, they're an important contact. So I better set them up the priority to, to one and, 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 and you don't want to be doing this. There's a way to make it all happen from the minute you enter them into your CRM. Yeah. And it's as simple as it was nice to meet you. CF name. Now that is a macro. This is the wonderful thing about, about, um, uh, software is that these wonderful little tools called macros that automatically will make it look personalized, but it's not. You know, it'll put their client or customer first name or contact first name will go in there. And if you just continue on with a simple email or text message, because there's some great uh, uh, you know SMS services that you um, that many CRMs will let you integrate, and uh, like Nextmo uh, is what we use. And it'll allow you to send out text messages to everybody. So you're not just sending out emails. You're going to send out a bunch of different types of media if you're going to do proper follow-up. That's right. Craig, a question from Nazrin. How can I be a technical or industrial copywriter regarding my background in electrical engineering? 
uh, chances are you wouldn't want to be when it comes to the use of your CRM. Your CRM, usually the first place is to, to get them to build trust in you and to stay a little bit more personal. Then you could always have series and lead magnets where you take your expertise and put them into email series. But normally that would not be the place to start. That would be sort of level nine. Um, you really want to get to where you offload your work and you start having more engagement with more people first. Thank but you. We Is will talk a little bit more about some of the lead yes. bags, some of the books and some of the things where you can show your expertise. I know there's uh, some meetups coming up. We tell you about writing your book. We've written that for the exact same purposes. There will be some places that that'll work for you, especially in a lead magnet. We'll show you, we'll show you that in a little bit. So the real key is to be thinking about this one follow-up email series that you want to slowly write is the one that works for everybody, whether they're interested in your business today or not. This is the forever flop. This is the not too technical, not too specific to your business about you and what you do because then it can turn into looking for referrals. So in other words, this is every single person you meet thinks you're just the most switched on person because they said it was nice meeting you yesterday. Okay, you don't get into sell, 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 sell. You will fail with sell, 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 sell. You will fail with all of your credentials in every email. You will fail with the stuff that makes you not seem to be a human and approachable, but someone that just confuses me and makes me miserable to hear from. So don't do that. Just start to get the human connection first in a very simple, short email kind of a way, build the relationship. Then you start dropping in a bit more about what you do. So. This is because you want to have something that every single person that you meet, because every single person you meet might be able to bring you your next biggest client if you follow up respectfully and in a way that's meaningful to them, even if they're not a customer today. Or right. maybe they never will be a customer, but they probably know something. Said, every one of your contacts right now, put them in a system, send them that first email, and just that anybody that you talk with your business about. You would spend less time entering the data and have the CRM automatically send the message than you would copying and pasting and handwriting an email or message to them. So remember- We're guilty, we're guilty. Just three days ago, I told Craig, Craig, why is it not in the system, right? Why did you not put it in the system? Yep, yep. We, we break our own rules. We do, and then, and then fortunately we have each other and we, you know, we <laughs> slap each other a couple of times virtually. <laughs> question, question from uh, Sonia Sokolova. Would you suggest using HubSpot marketing tools? Heck no. Use small business dream. <laughs> <laughs> that was an easy one. That's right. Oh. <laughs> so if you only used your CRM to do this one simple action, this one simple email, hi, how are you? Uh, and that's all you did. You didn't even make another email. That's all you did. Every single person you talked to got a nice thing that talked about you, made a connection to them. You just did more than 70% of your competitors would ever do. And the ones that all believe they don't need a CRM, you actually would have just formed a bigger bond and a bigger relationship and a bigger possibility with that one simple action. You'd be running laps around them. It is just that simple. Then of course, we can make it all go crazy. We can. Because remember, people that you meet are always going to appreciate non-self-serving follow-up after meeting you. It builds your credibility as a business professional and a good human. That's right. And that's what you're trying to do first. Exactly. So now, of course, we can mess it all up, Craig. Yeah. This is how yeah. you really go crazy. And this, this is going to make a lot of sense. You're going to go, why didn't I think of that? That's right. Oh, my God. But it looks hard, Craig. Come on now. Come on now. You Wait, got to write a second follow-up follow email. email. <laughs> that's it that's all you have to do and set it in your crm to send one week after your first email so here's and the now, cool thing dennis you don't have to write them back to back no you got a week to write right. you put the first one you got seven days to write the next one see we're not even tyrants like you don't even have to do a whole bunch of stuff every day you got seven days to write the second email then you're going to time the third email to be seven days after that oh my god i just gave you a whole nother week for homework holy yeah. smokes and these are little paragraph at the most emails this isn't hard yeah you can sit down and actually write them back to back and yeah. then you got your homework done for two weeks and and don't just do emails you know we emails are great we're going to talk about that but text sms sms follow-up and send, sending a, a short text uh you get a faster immediate response we just did this with one of our clients um a, a pub here in white rock 
and we sent uh, it was the hockey game on Sunday, and we sent uh, through our system a text message to all of his local customers that had already come in. And the text message was simple. It was his first period of the hockey game. And we said, before the hockey game is over, if you come in and buy any Molson product, you get a free uh, shrimp appetizer. And hit the button. And the second period, people started coming in with their phone saying, I got a text message, where's my free shrimp? And the waitress would say, you got to buy your Molson first. Yeah, so we, we actually only sent out 1,000 as a sampling. And we actually had seven people show up who spent an average of $50 each before the evening was up. So with one push of a button that cost the client, I think, ah, might've been 12 cents, I think. It's like 0 0.01 cents a text or something. Anyways, might've been 12 cents, might've been a buck. He generated $350 in revenue. And that was only a quarter of his list. So this stuff is so powerful. If you start putting every single person you meet into your CRM, so that you have the ability to communicate with them about an upcoming event. You can let them know something. And of course, we're gonna teach you some tricks on how to actually make your list even more powerful by having it segmented so you don't go send somebody not interested in beer an email about beer. But that's, that's, that's the advanced yeah. course in the second yeah, cause, half. Cause that, that is, we, know, we know what everybody is thinking here. I know, you can see it on their faces. I know. <laughs> yeah, my contacts are gonna hate being automated and getting many messages from me. When you get mad, they're gonna disconnect. Is what everybody thinks. Darn it. Guess what, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> if you go into sell, 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 and you represent yourself as, oh, and by the way, I'm a, I'm a uh, financial planner and I'm a real estate agent and I'm a mortgage broker. And I also put in light bulbs that have to be screwed in clockwise. And I'm the expert at all of those things. You're right. They're going to disconnect with you and run, 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 run. And you're going to fail. And it will not be the CRM's fault. It will be your lack of focus, your lack of being specific. Exactly. But you know what? Maybe that's not what you were thinking. No. Maybe what you're thinking. Is that my contacts need a personal touch, Dennis. So CRM oh. automation, it doesn't work for me. It needs to be no. personal. You want to know how to make something personal? Type something that you're planning to put in your email real fast on your phone. Let Siri screw it up. Cut and paste that into your email. Send it. Boom. Personal. That's right. And most good CRMs are not uh, will allow you not just a multi-channel contact, but semi-automated follow-up capabilities as well. And this is the key to being able to personalize a message. So instead yeah. of sending the, the email immediately and automatically, it brings it up in your system. Hey, this email is supposed to be sent today to this person and gives you the email and a chance for you to put in, hey, I know you just got back from your trip to, you know, the, to, the, to the lake. Did you catch any fish? You can personalize it and then your message is there and then you hit the send button. So yeah. semi-automation is the key. Yeah, so that's one of the things. The joke is, you know, you put in some spelling errors, it feels personal. But the reality is, if you're that worried about a particular segment of your list, there are definitely cases where a semi-automated email is going to return. So what a semi-automated email means is you've written the bulk of it, but you just have the ability to add that personalization, like Craig said, to the front. So it's still the boilerplate stuff that does 80% of the work for you but there's that one little place to modify. So it's a huge, that's probably one of the biggest tips we can give you about using CRM is it's not always fully automated. You need to bounce between fully automated, semi-automated, a phone call, a text message. Oh, did I say phone call? Yeah, you actually need to pick up the phone and phone people. Don't worry, they're not gonna answer, but they're gonna know you phoned, right? You don't, you're not doing it because you think they're gonna answer, you're gonna have a conversation. You're allowed to be scared to talk to people. No one answers their phones but they know that you're a little bit better than all the other people that just smashed them with stuff on the internet and emails and stuff. So the minute they see on their phone that you called, they're like, oh my gosh, what was important enough for them to call me? It, it, nowadays, phoning people works better than any other method of doing business, but just don't expect them to answer the phone. They might call you back, they'll probably text you back, but your next email, they'll pay a little bit more attention to because they're like, well, this person actually cared enough about me to call me. So multi-channel, 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 multi-channel. 
And semi-automated is one of the keys to making your CRM work, no matter how scared you are of thinking that your friends are different. Your friends are humans like my friends. And I promise you that if the odd one gets mad at you because you sent them too many emails that they can click one button and be removed from the list, is that really your friend? Question, but if you, yes. Question from Troy, does your yep. system include RVMDs? What's a VMD? What's an RVMD? What is an RVMD? Troy, why don't you unmute and explain what an RVMD is? Ringless voicemail drop. No, we do not get involved into ringless voicemail drops. And that's only because it's a personal belief of mine that I hate them and I refuse to do business with anyone who ever sends me one. So it's only a personal thing. So no, we don't support it. We may in the future, but no, we don't at this point. Question from Himant. Do you think the CRM market is saturated? And are there any, <laughs> are there in, are, and do you think the CRM market is saturated and there are many comparison analysis that recommend different top CRMs? Okay, so first of all, let's be clear that CRM is misunderstood. And actually 90% of the things, including ours, we call it a CRM because it makes people have a general clue of what it might be. But actually CRM is more the Salesforce, the, the Microsoft Dynamics. Most of the tools are marketing automation tools that are out there. And marketing automation tools are the only thing that you need as a small business or solopreneur. You don't actually need a full blown CRM. Is it oversaturated? Absolutely. Is one better than the other? Honestly, it really depends what your focus is, right? Um, if you're just going online, then you can get away with a lot of the cheaper ones if you have the ability to learn how to use it online and do it all yourself. The biggest thing that separates CRMs are the ones that actually have support where you can talk to someone who knows how to use it or has an ecosystem where there's a bunch of people that are charging you to do that. So when you're just going with one that you go online, you enter your credit card, you buy it, it's there, and now you figure it out with videos, you're probably not gonna have success with that because you're not a copyright expert, you're not this, you're not that, you're not the other thing. You may, but that means you have an awful lot of time to go learn five professions that you might be able to outsource to people who know how to do it already. So it's, it's not as simple as a comparison of the tool to the tool. There's lots of tools that do a bunch of the basic stuff. You need to find the one that fits you or just pick the very first one you find and use the crap out of it until you realize it's deficient and then go find another one. The point is analysis paralysis is 90% of the reason people don't use CRM. They keep thinking they need to find a better one. Oh, maybe I can find a cheaper one. Just pick one and start the basics. Question from Guy, do you have experience with vet hospitals? We do not have experience directly with vet hospitals. Uh, they would be appointment based. Um, again, there's lots of cool stuff we could do for vet hospitals. Uh, it would be an interesting vertical for sure. It wouldn't be that hard to solve a bunch of their pain problems fairly quickly. You just need to consider if there's already sort of a vet scheduling type thing that does some of it. A lot of the times there's tools out there that sort of work for them, but they're not marketing automation. So making the two work together can be a strategy they've never seen before. And uh, definitely uh, from a, a vet hospital point of view, I can already come up with a whole list of things we could do to, to very, very much help a vet hospital. Uh, Troy wants to know if the question is about veteran or veterinarian. Animals I'm assuming are that's a veterinarian. Veterinarian. Okay. Questions done. Cool. Great. So I guess Dennis, uh, a lot of people are thinking about this last, and this is probably the, the this is the biggest comment that we get all the time: the resistance to data entry. Yeah. It is so complicated to add a contact to a CRM and add it to the correct follow-up series or multiple series. Set its priority, even have the comprehension of knowing that you should have multiple series. The next follow-up date for a phone call, there's all these pieces of information that you're supposed to enter. Notes, yeah. uh, what went on, what's going on. Uh, it, it, it just goes on and on and on. And the oh, tags, tags. Dennis, everybody forgets about tags. So you can sift and sort tags. the data at a later date. What's right? that? Tags are horrible. You have to, they're, they're the most powerful thing ever. But unless you know what they are, you're probably not using them and you're reducing the capability of your future marketing efforts by 98% by not knowing tags. 
but they're not so easy to add. Right. And as you just said here, it gets worse. It's, it's, it's overwhelmingly complicated, but most CRM users don't even know what is possible within their CRM or why it's important to do it. Just like you, you said, why do I need tags, Dennis? You should spend more money finding someone who understands CRM that you can spend two or three hours with to have them create a CRM plan for you and then put it into whatever CRM you want. The hard part about being a small business owner is you don't know what they're possible. You don't know how to use them. You don't have time to learn it. Just go and get some help to learn how to use it. And that help should include our favorite hack. So yeah. anyone using a CRM right now, when we show you this, you're going to be like, what the? So most CRMs have the ability for you to create a landing page with a survey. All right. This is really important. And it can look just like this. Now, this is not something that your customer is ever going to see. This is something that you're going to see on your phone. You're going to bring it up in your phone. And now you've got, we call this a walk and talk data capture. We created this one for real estate. Right. So the key is that in a good CRM's survey functionality, any answer can usually trigger an action. Okay. So for example, here, enroll in what follow-up, because this is for us to know what to do after we met a potential prospect for real estate. We know that we just want to put them into our personal walk and talk. So by clicking that radio button, they'll automatically be added to that series for us. And then owner rent. Well, based upon them saying owner rent, we're going to tag them with owner rent. And then looking to buy or sell. Buy or sell, we're gonna tag them with how fast they're looking to buy or sell. Needs a realtor, hey, they're open to a realtor, they're not open to a realtor, their best friend's a realtor. It's gonna tag them. And some of these things will also put them into another follow-up series or another thing. And then my favorite trick for those that are worried about personalization. So when you meet me at a networking event that has alcoholic beverages available, just cause it makes it more fun for everyone. Um, I'm going to figure out when you're holding a beer and I'm going to say, so, oh, I see you drinking a beer. Is that your favorite beverage? And you're going to say yes or no. And if you say no, I'm going to say, what is your favorite beverage? And once I know this, after I finish talking to you and I open up this survey on my phone, I'm going to put said craft beer drinker. Now in 38 days or something, you're going to get an email that's in all lowercase letters. Looks like I just smashed it out to you on my iPhone. It's going to have a spelling error in it. It's going to say, man, I am headed off to a friend's house for dinner and he's a craft beer lover. I remember when we chatted, you said you were a craft beer lover. And would you happen to have any recommendations of a good craft beer that I could take? That is almost a 100% engagement email. 100% of the people are kind enough to share with me. And then in future conversations, you just see, how the hell did you remember that I like craft beer? Well, I didn't have to remember. I clicked a button at the time I talked to you and then, sorry, buddy, forgot about you 100%. But now we got a relationship started over What's your favorite gin? I'm going to a friend who loves gin. What's your favorite white wine? I'm going, man, I go to barbecues and dinner parties. Like there's nobody's business as far as everybody that I'm communicating with. Um, so there are ways to collect data and create engagement that are all just personal. They're all just personal. And you just got an imprint. They feel more cared about because of you taking the time, right? And were you doing something devious? Did they remember what you were drinking? Well, you know what's funny, Dennis, when you talk about that, we tell people that we're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, th and then they get the email and they completely got that we told them, oh, by the way, you're going to get an email, you know, like in about, you know, four to six weeks, you know, asking you about your beer. That's how our system works. And they forget and they go and they see the email. And as they're typing the, the response, like, oh, Dennis told me that was going to happen. Yeah, you often get two emails. You get the first one with the suggestion and then you go, all right, you got me. Question so, from Sonia. Yes. 97% says who? Says our stats. Says Dennis's stats. Says the fact that we use this and been using this for many, many, many years. And if it's opened, okay, so understand that it has to be opened to get a response. If it's opened, we have a 100%. If it was opened and it sees in my stats that it was opened, I get a reply to it. 
it just maybe one in a hundred doesn't, but I don't think so. It's literally if they opened it, they reply to it. As as I would, right? I mean, oh my God, you remembered that I liked white wine, and yeah, man, I just had the best whatever Pinot Gris that I've ever experienced, and I want to share that with the world because that's how wine people are. And a beer guy that just tasted that great IPA, man, he needs to share it with the world. I mean, this is just how it works. And of yeah, course, we have the non alcohol. Come on. Another, another question. What does this data entry form do other than email opt-in? Okay, so this form literally puts them into your CRM, makes them into a contact, and does whatever you tell it in the background to do. So this will set tags. This will set a tag as owns, ready to buy and sell, has a realtor, favorite beverage, uh, it'll put them into an email follow-up series, the personal walk and talk or the home maintenance, no purchase one, or whatever else it is, could put them into a text message follow-up series to remind you to send them a text message three weeks from now, or the next day saying, hey, we met yesterday. It can populate that message into your software, and if you do it on your phone, to be able to go send it out, or if you're using like a Nextmo account, automatically send it. It can do whatever you tell it to do in the background so that all you do is put in their information and hit submit. So you wanna spend a little bit of time, probably 30 minutes to think to yourself, what information is gonna be beneficial to you to know about everyone you meet at a networking event that if you knew that, you would know if they are a customer, not a customer, leave them on the friends only part, uh, move them forward, don't move them forward. And then you will set up your questions in your CRM. Almost all CRMs allow you to do this, right? This isn't just us. This is just us teaching how to use your CRM. Um, so you're going to come up with the few things that you want to collect, make your questions for you. And then, of course, you need to get very skilled at your networking functions by saying hi first, engaging every single person that you can, getting the answers in the course of a natural sounding conversation. Right? I have a natural conversation that when we meet at a VBN network, I've picked up six or seven things about you for me to decide how to follow up with you. So this is the real key to it. It's all about you coming up with the things that you need to track to make your business better, putting them into a survey so that it's all done at the time you meet them instead of after you get home when you don't think about it and you've forgotten you whatever. It's literally, I talk to you. As we say, thanks, good meeting you, shake hands. As I turn around, I open up the app, I put in the information. I hit go. Yep. Done. Now, if yours doesn't do that, Dennis, yeah, we created a little. We created a little app for free. Yep. free download. <laughs> we created one called the SBD, that Small Business Dream, Virtual Business Card, and it allows you to do just that. Very, yep. very close. Gets the information and send an initial text message that you pre-wrote uh, before you got to an event. Great yep. little way to do it. Uh, it also, uh, so it literally, it's a button. <laughs> you take their name, their, 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 their phone number, their first name, their last name, and their email, and you push the button. And when it does that, it, it populates a pre-written text message that you've already done saying, hey, great meeting here at the event. Here's my name. It, you put their name in first, so it automatically puts theirs in. So when you're going back through your text messages, you remember who you sent the text yeah. message to? Real simple. Uh, it then does create a contact list for you in the back. Uh, so it's not really a CRM, but it does hold your information there for you. And you can see when you push the button, it goes immediately to your phone's texting service, puts in your V card that you created with your information. So you can customize that every time you go to a different event, depending on what hat you happen to be wearing. And you can even upload your own logo to it. So when you tell somebody, now right now you can't really turn your phone to somebody and say, push the button. button. <laughs> okay, that's not COVID friendly right now, but it will be again. And if you happen to have our software using our CRM, all this information can then immediately push into uh, the CRM that you're using. So, or at least if it's small business free. Yeah. So it's a, it's a cool way to collect this data in a more, uh, friendly way than you're possibly doing now with instantaneous results and instantaneous connection. And just by looking at your phone, you remember their name, their phone number, and what you said, what you said to each other. So it's a, a real cool way to get one step closer to maximizing your CRM than you are now by not using it. And it's free. And it's free. It is.
So, Dennis, I think what we see a lot, and, and you can even hear when we ask the question, you know, people don't even know what a CRM stand for. Now, <laughs> Roger, you were nice, and you actually said that right at the beginning, customer relationship management. I thought it meant can't remember. <laughs> so we just talked about tags. People don't know what tags are and why they need them. One of the biggest reasons for tags, and we're going to get into more about tags in a second, is that you're able to then search and sort your data based on tags. So you could do it based on an event. If you went to, uh, uh, to this event and everybody that you met here tonight, you could have a tag in your CRM that they were uh, on today's date, VBN, today's date. That's a tag. If you, yeah. you know, so these are things that you can go and add. Or if you had all your wine lovers, you could literally go in and say, I'm gonna send a, hey, how is everybody who's a red wine lover, just to have that extra little touch. So you can start to really, really segment your database with tags. You can search for them, then add them to a series because now you have a new product line that fits specifically to a group of people that you had carefully tagged because you knew one day you'd have that product line. So tags are crazy, crazy powerful. And again, if you don't know what they are, Get with someone who understands CRM, let them help you map it out a little bit, and you'll be just uh, quite surprised at how easy it is for it to work once someone's helped you map out the solution to your problems. And so, a multi-channel approach, Dennis, is so important to not freak out your prospects with email after email after email oh, yeah. after email after email. It's and really important. Okay to send email after email after email. We'll go into that. You just need to know how to do it. That's right. But a multi-channel approach. Like our, our software, Small Business Dream, allows you to follow up by Skype, by LinkedIn, by Facebook, uh, by text message, by email, and you just decide how you're going to connect with them at, at that time. So you can have a multi-channel approach. Two questions. Yep. So, so, this, so is this app a mini CRM with features, or we need to purchase a CRM plan after we start using it? The button app is a free app that allows you to do exactly what Craig said, uh, and that is to use it to collect data and have an easy way to get a text message out, and that's all its function. It's a free app, guys. Uh, and no, there was another follow-up question where it says, does it export to any other CRM? No, of course, it's a free app, guys. So it's our promotional tool to have us. It's very functional without having the ability to export, but no, it's... It's our app and it's made to work with our software and so, it's made purposely a little tiny bit inconvenient for others so that people consider uh, using ours. Right. So you, if you had another, you weren't using Small Business Dream, you do have access to a record of all your contacts yep. that you can then manually enter into right. your own CRM later. So if you don't have the ability to create a really cool survey uh, in your CRM software like we talked about, the button app is just a real fast way to send a text message and remember them. It creates a memorable experience. The engagement rate's very high. We One actually had it for almost two years before we even allowed it to connect to our own um, software. So follow up question, but does it have all the basic features a CRM has? No, the button app is a button app that does exactly what Craig says it does. Yeah. You put in the information, you click a button, it brings up a pre-formatted text message, you click send. No, we'd, we'd be broke if we were giving away free CRM. Okay. Separate question from Brenda. Yeah. Is it possible to export info from Small Business Dream virtual business card to another CRM other nope. than Small Business Dream? Yeah. Well, as we already said, we don't allow that because it is a free app and its purpose is to help us find customers. Uh, but as Craig said, you can easily pull that information out. And of course, because it's forcing you to send a text message, you're going to have their first name, last name, and email right there in your phone. So you could be cutting and pasting it out. So no, unfortunately, it is purposely inconvenient for you to use with the CRM that you already have because we're hoping to have people on our CRM. <laughs> right. So we talked about tags, Dennis. These are some examples of tags. Yeah, so let's say tags are categories. So a lot of people get confused when they hear tags. Tags are just basically a way to categorize your contacts. And you can have many, many tags for each customer based upon many, many different events or, or different interests that they have. The more you use your CRM and the more complicated your setup becomes, the more you'll accumulate tags. And the more tags you have, the more powerful your CRM gets. So you don't need to worry about any of this upfront. Upfront, you just need simple follow-up emails. 
then you learn the next step, the next step, the next step of CRM. And eventually you will love tags. In the beginning, they're just a little bit overwhelming. So we talked about insufficient automated follow-up. And this is where people get scared. They don't follow up enough. Yeah. Now, I put this picture of a $100 bill here to remind me of a story. And, uh, and I learned this uh, from uh, one of our networking um, uh, events that we were at to, I think it was in San Francisco, back when we could fly, Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> and not self-quarantine for two weeks on the way home. Uh, and it's about having good content. So if I came and knocked on your door, knock, 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 at 10 o'clock in the morning, and you opened your door, and I was standing there and I handed you a fresh, crisp $100 bill, would you be happy that I showed up? Would you be happy to take that information? You'd take that $100 bill, go, that was just really nice of Craig. If tomorrow I knocked on your door at the same time at 10 a.m., and I had another $100 bill, would you be happy that I showed up again? Well, you'd be like, hey, do you think you could show up again at five o'clock with a hundred dollar bill? <laughs> and what if I had a couple of my friends that were behind the door as well? Would you be able to give them a hundred dollar bill? You could show up on the hour every hour with a hundred dollar bill because it is good value. So if you're giving valuable information and you're giving them stuff that is not always self-serving, but good information, you can send as much as you want. It's when it's all self-serving and it's bad that it gets that little button on the bottom where it says unsubscribe. Or it's mistargeted. So you can have the best real estate information ever. And if you're sending it to someone who's not a realtor, you're gonna get unsubscribed from. So that's where the tagging comes in to make sure that your list eventually gets segregated, right? So if they're, if they're out of, if they've jumped out of the friends and family forever follow-up referral, list onto another one of your lists. The truth is you can email the people that are on a list where they're now interested in what you do as often you want until they remove. So if they remove themselves, good riddance, because so what? They were on your list and they never engaged with you. So who cares if they go away, right? You got to think of data as abundant instead of data as scarce, because uh, you can send a, a crazy thing. You can send the exact same email out 10 times. And as long as the subject line is different, most people will never realize that you sent the exact same email 10 times because they didn't open it. So if one headline doesn't get them to open it, try another headline. Yep. Sign up to Brian Tracy, sign up to a bunch of these guys and you will see half the time their emails are almost identical three weeks later to the one you got three weeks before. But the headline's different. Right? You know, if you really want to learn how to copyright, well, we'll get into that. I think we come to a copyright section, don't we, Craig? No, we're not doing copyright. Oh, we don't do that? Okay. So, easiest key to copyright. Go sign up to every motivational speaker you can think of's email list. Create a folder in your email client where you direct those emails to because you don't want to look at them every day. And then whenever you need to write an email, you go and say, hey, this email is the content that is like Brian Tracy would do. So then you go look at Brian Tracy and you look down the row of your hundred emails that you've got, because sometimes you'll get four a day from him. Okay. And you go, Hey, that headline's kind of like what I want to use. <laughs> and you grab his headline and you switch it to fit you perfectly. You just got a headline that's probably going to work better than anything you came up with yourself. And then you go through the body and you find a couple of things that might work and they're close and you take them and you rework them into your words. And now you have an email, but, your copywriting source, just get on everybody's list. Find your industry, find the masters of your industry, get on their list, collect the stuff for when you need to write an email, and then pay attention to your subject more than your body. Yes, you have to have a good body, but your subject is what gets them to open and read your body. So you don't have to have completely different emails all the time. Slightly different body, different headline to attract different parts of your list. Some and people aren't emails are easy. There, there, there's, there's 12, there's 12 a year right? Yep. Happy yeah. Easter. Merry Christmas, right? These are your friends and family emails where you're just checking in saying, hi, who else does that? Right. right? And now with Facebook and everybody saying happy birthday on Facebook, nobody sends anybody an email saying happy birthday, right? It, yeah, get your to do that. Facebook, Facebook. And we clicks a button. Oh, that was really nice. Put a nice little email that says, hey, happy birthday. I was thinking about you. Fantastic. So you can't have too little. Nope. And not long enough. This is yeah. the problem. I mean, Dennis, and, and, and I was bad for this. I mean, we, we had, a, we had a, uh, a carpet store client that was using our system, and they stopped. They said, I don't follow up after two weeks. If they don't come in after two weeks, they're not coming in. 
And I said this to Dennis, and Dennis went, well, that's stupid. <laughs> that's, what if the project gets delayed? Put a month, so I convinced him to have a one month follow up. But after one month, they'll never come in. And the dentist was like, Craig, write them a two month, a three month, and a six month follow up and don't tell them. At the time, building permits in Vancouver were backlogged for six months. So you can't tell me a guy doing it by the book that needs 15 grand worth of carpet isn't going to be in the market in six months. They don't need it for six months because they haven't got their building permit. So, anyways. And literally, <laughs> In, in three, uh, it was a couple of weeks later. It was one of the, late, the later ones came out because uh, it was time. Uh, it, it timed just perfectly on the three month follow up for him. And uh, he comes into one of the stores waving his, his phone saying, Who's the guy that's been emailing me? And all the salespeople dove for cover. So one guy using the system, well, it was me. He goes, Okay, I'm ready to buy. <laughs> You're the only one that followed up with me. And it was a $14,000 sale. And he gets, I think he was getting about a 10% commission. So he made like $1,400 because it, the, I put in some extra. Because I forced Craig to spend 30 seconds and write a three month follow up for the customer. <laughs> now, Dennis, and you're on, and, and selling uh, software for uh, network marketing companies. Yep. What's the longest follow up uh, sale that you had? About 14 years. There you go. Yeah, 14 years after initial contact, the guy's like, hey, I'm finally ready. And I'm like, awesome. Oh, I can't believe you cared about me to email me for so long. I didn't, but <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and then not enough variety. This is another big problem, Dennis, is people, you're not using different mediums. So yeah. you've got to have different ways to be able to connect, have different landing pages, have different information. This is what I use as one of our landing pages for our LinkedIn tool. So uh, it's a landing page. We talked about a lead magnet. So this is where our friend was saying, I've got all this really good information. Write a book. <laughs> yeah. Write a pamphlet. Write a three-pager. It doesn't need to be a book. It can look like a book and it can be a three-page PDF. Give value to generate a list. Exactly. Simple sales funnel, simple giveaway. Right. And don't be too self-serving. All right. They don't care. Your customer doesn't care. They just don't care. They don't well, and it's worse than that. They're not your customer yet. They're not your customer yet. So the more you just keep going on with all your credentials and all your amazingness and all your wonderfulness, the more they just throw up in their mouth a little bit. Start building that relationship so that you eventually have more of a relationship than the other 19 guys that are emailing them all the time. Right. Because what you're going to need over time is a multi-channel pre-written mixture of automated touch points. But it starts with one, guys. It's okay. You yeah. start with one, and then one day you wake up and go, I think I'm going to do an SMS series. And you write one of those. And then seven days later, you write another one. And over three months, you end up with 10 or 15 pieces of information that are now automatically going out. And it just builds, and it builds, and it builds if you commit to the process of automating. Right. So guides, information, seasonal best wishes. It's got to stay engaging for years or until they convert or they click the stop. Remove. And if you were to do this, you can do it yourself. Now we've got, we've, we've done the math, we've done the research, we you know, outsource it. It would cost you about for 36 touch points that you could reuse over and over and over. That's, that's enough for three years. Uh, you are going to spend about $75 each to go outsource this stuff. So you could spend about $2,700 and that's outsourcing in like the Philippines. That's not outsourcing in Canada where you could might as well triple that number yeah, easily. Uh, or the U S so, or you can do it yourself. I mean, you've got time. It's COVID. And again, <laughs> you don't need 36 touch points from day one. You need one, do it yourself, try it out, get comfortable with it. Right. So write your own copy for your walk and talk, you know, just keep in mind the golden rule. This is the golden rule, right? In human. Oh, so yes. easy to use terms that only people in your industry understand, but your customer, potential customer doesn't. Yeah, stay really, really human. So Dennis, now what do we do? I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I'm scared. Create a walk and talk forever follow-up. That's right. right? And the key is don't be going after your follow-up as if they're ready to be a customer today. Start with forming a relationship ask for referrals, have a very clear definition of what you do and what you're looking for and ask them if they know someone that might be able to help. Don't right. go into sales pitch mode on your first couple of emails. Go after referrals, go after help. Yeah, 
Don't exchange contact details unless you truly plan to follow up within 24 hours. Yeah, so think about that for a second. So you and I meet and you said, hey man, here's my card. I got your card, man. We should touch base. And then you never contact me. And then when you're ready to sell me something you do, sorry, doesn't work that way. If yeah. you didn't follow up when you said you were gonna email me or contact me, uh, why would I buy your product or service? It's better to have it automated so at least something went out and I'm thinking, wow, that person switched on. Even yeah. if it was a misspelled automated email, it's better than the person who promised to touch base and didn't. Anyone guilty? I'm guilty. Every time I don't use my software, I seem to forget to follow up with people. Yeah, and this is where a CRM really comes in handy. That's right. So networking events, I mean, uh, when we get back, what we're doing right now, a great chance to meet people, great chance to put somebody into, uh, into a forever follow-up series, great chance to connect with somebody through social media and exchange your information. Um, you know, when people ask you, what do you do? If you go to a live event, like what we do here, you need to know a 40 second answer to what do you do when you're with VBN. And a 30 second one, if it's busy. Right. You need to go specific to go broad, become an expert. Yeah. So even today, there was a couple of people who said, well, I'm a this and I'm a this. You should pick one. And then if you want to be two, then next week you come back and be the other. As soon as you say you're two things, you're an expert at nothing. So I instantly lose credibility. So be the expert at one thing. If you're an expert at five things, only talk about one of them today. Yeah. And you will actually increase your engagement. You will. And, you know, make sure you add uh, a, a, their personal details into your CRM with everybody. Just get everybody in your system. Let it's the CRM day. do the work for you. That's right. Now... Uh, we're just going to blast through a couple, last couple of little things. Now, so I know we wanted, we wanted to go into some poses and that we're running at the top of the hour here because uh, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> we're so, not used to having questions interspersed. So. Yeah, that's, that's good. So we got LinkedIn. We got Facebook. These are the Instagram and YouTube. These are the big ones. And your CRM should be uh, able to help you remember to follow up in every single one of these social media platforms. And... We know the power of referrals, uh, joint venturing with friends, family, and, and connections. I know there's people uh, on the Zoom right now. That's what they do. They help teach you to make those, uh, uh, those connections. So when you and tell somebody. And there's others that are just naturally awesomatic. You know, Patrick, 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 Patrick. <laughs> right? Having swipe copy to give your friends to send the potential referrals can increase your sex rate dramatically. So this is having emails inside your CRM that you send to a prospect that's, that's already pre-written so they can just forward it to somebody that'd be interested in your products. Yeah, so imagine the difference. Instead of saying, hey, would you be interested in referring me people who are looking to buy a home in the South Burnaby area in the price range of this in the Hispanic community? You actually said, if you are, here's an email that you can send them, pre-written, and it has all the things they need to say. So now you just made it very easy. When you ask for a referral and you give no support for how they ask for the referral, don't expect a referral. If you give them what they need to do it, you will have way more success in generating referrals. Right. And this is where also, if your CRM allows you to make landing pages with free, gated, non-serving and self-serving resources, this will amplify your success. Now, gated right. means that you're asking them before they get the information for their name and their email. Make a simple YouTube video, leave it unlisted put it up as your lead magnet. If you give me your name and email, I will give you a video that teaches you how to tie a tie. It's not a, th I mean, there's a, there's a whole channel. It's one of the biggest channels on YouTube. It makes one of the biggest amounts of money on YouTube and it is called how to tie a tie. It's okay to be really specific and professional. Right. And you know what, you're, you're, now we're getting out more uh, posting in community centers and public places with bulletin boards. Don't just post a business card or a self-serving brochure. Post a lead magnet with a simple headline or a QR code that goes to your landing page to get contact information. These things are so simple uh, and now being touchless, nobody wants to pull your card off right. a bulletin board anymore or a, or a little strip. You used to use a little cut strip with a phone number. They don't do that. COVID has been so phone. good for QR code adoption, I'll tell you. Everyone knows what a QR code is now. <laughs> now, we do hear a lot of people asking about emails. Emails are not dead. They are great once you have a big list. But it doesn't work well on its own like it once did. No, it's really your, it's your, it's your credibility. So the fact that you've been sending them an email, guess what they're going to do? 
They're going to do what I told you to do with Brian Tracy. And suddenly you're going to have a folder and all your stuff's going to go into that folder. And when they're finally ready, because you said something, they're going to go take a look in that folder and they're going to see all the amazing stuff you spent. They're going to spend hours reading through your old information. It's your great big forever bucket of information that they've been saving up for when they're ready. And then they literally just come to you and they're ready to buy. Like they are so seriously switched on because they had all your information stored up. And when the time was right for them, they went to your folder and they read it. So don't expect people to be reading right now. If it's not the right time, they're not going to read. Nope. If you're in right. their mind, they will go find it and they will do their research from all that wonderful content you gave them. And don't be too professional in your copy. You know what? You don't need to have a perfectly made uh, you know, email with beautiful photos that nobody's going <laughs> to download and all professional. You know, slap it out. People read stuff that is real. And if it looks like you just typed it, like Dennis yeah. talked about, with yeah, a if you use if pretty much if you use any MailChimp template that's beautiful, graphical, and all branded to your company, you can expect close to zero percent engagement rate. Where a well-written headline and a well-written text with a bit of bolding and, and some very very light stuff, you will get considerably, like astronomically higher engagement rates. Templated email guck like RBC sends you does not create engagement for almost any industry, including RBCs. So yeah. don't do it. Right. It makes you feel good, but your customers actually get driven away by it. Yeah. 80-20 rule applies. Really, it's a 90-10 rule, right? So, 25 five. Yeah. <laughs> no self-serving. Right. This is what's going to make your phone ring. This is That's the right. backup of everything else that you're doing. So now I know we're at the top. I know we got more questions coming. I see them coming in. Uh, we're at the top of the hour. Is it okay to go a little bit longer there, Roger? Where are we at? Well, yeah, just a little bit. How much longer do you think? We, we're, we're right here at the end, a couple of last little things. So okay. if we leave the questions till the end. That'll let us finish what we, what we got to get through, okay? Okay. What I do want to share, because this is so important, and is, is what do you put out there for content? And people always ask, well, why do you guys have that really weird post? Uh, because it converts <laughs> because it works. <laughs> so, this is not, by the way, a power post. All right. This is not, this is not convert. You're not Tiger Woods. All right. So first of all, this is so important. We see this huge in the real estate industry. For some reason, do not use a photo that is 10 years ago or 40 pounds ago. All right. I guess right now don't use a pre COVID photo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We've all put our little bit of weight. Yeah, some, super some super important because if they only know you from your online presence and then all of a sudden you meet them and you're not that person, you've instantly made them feel like you're not trustworthy. So right. be really careful with it. We get it. Your best side, your whatever, whatever. Give up on all that. Be real because eventually you're going to meet them. So this is the third highest converting post on the, on, this is online, on the internet. It's only online. third. The hands crossed is, is, is the highest. If it's two women together is the highest converting. Man and a woman, and Second then highest. two men. Two third. men, third highest. Yeah. We don't make the rules. It's just the internet's opinion. It's just what right. sells. And it can be single shots. Yep. Hey, Sarah. See? <laughs> there we go. Now, this, is, uh, this one here is called the giver. Now, notice how her hands are out, like you're holding a yoga ball, and you're giving. All right? You can angle it a little bit, too. So it's giver. You don't want to have your hands flat. That's a beggar. That's the beggar. You're not a beggar. You're the giver. OK? And the thinker, Daryl, there, Daryl, the thinker, yes. You also get to hide your COVID chin. That's right. You can do a COVID facelift. There you go. And Christina. finally, the hardest <laughs> one to get away with, but if you can, this is actually one of the top converting poses, especially if you're trying to sell a book. Yeah, book <laughs> offers or course offers or anything that you can be promoting in that uh, coveted space of your chest. Right. Works for yeah. women too. So you're going to put these and use these in your LinkedIn profiles. You're going to use them in your Facebook profiles. You're going to use them in your lead magnets. This is where you could create your own. We talked about that earlier. What do I do with all this information I have in my head? Now, the, the five secrets to flawless, to flawless skin. I mean, it's it's not a real book. It looks like a book. It's a, it, it's a, it's a PDF and it's like two pages. It's a lead magnet. So it doesn't need to be you know, like my 140 page LinkedIn book. Doesn't need to be that big. It just has to be valuable information. Right? You just need to have the strategies to be able to go and use your CRM to its fullest. All these things are available for you to be able to build your business. Now, 
Last, just so you understand, we've got apps that we've uh, designed. Small Biz Dream is an app. You can go find it in Google Play and you can find it on in the, uh, in the app store. Uh, Small Business Dream is the granddaddy. Then we do have other verticals uh, that allow us uh, that you can get your customers to download to keep you top of mind. We did the same thing for restaurants and anybody needs deliveries. And this one, we've just picked up Molson Canadian to uh, help get it into some of their larger pub clients to increase their sales. So, and if you don't have any real estate, we have Realty Biz Connect. So once again, allowing you to show your properties, uh, joint venture with you, subscribe to your newsletter, get your home tips. Because everybody now wants to be touchless, nobody, and they want to be able to get their information on their phone. So we have special webinar pricing if you're interested and you don't have a CRM right now, and you'd like to get one, we're offering to set it up for you for free, $99 a month or $9.99 for the year. You're getting two months for free. But because we like you all, we got some free bonuses. We're also going to get you started right away with your data and we'll allow you to use 100 business card scan credits. So literally you can take all those business cards that are stacked up at home. <laughs> that are less than six months it. old. <laughs> you can literally go and input them right into our CRM and that's a hundred dollar value. And we're going to use our LinkedIn prospecting system that many of you may have, have seen uh, that I've done before for my book. And we'll give you 200 LinkedIn prospecting credits. Well, our guys go out there and start building your LinkedIn profile. So these are the details, everybody. If you're interested, you can email us, Craig and Dennis at smallbizdream.com. We both get that email. Uh, you can call us or text us at 600-604-900-2384. Or you can get access to the three different verticals of Delivery Biz Connect, Realty Biz Connect, or Small Business Dream at these URLs, and everybody gets the bonuses. So that's what we got to say. Dennis, did you want to finish off and have anything else you want to say so we can wrap this up? No, I mean, I just think that it's, it's important for everybody to really embrace their CRM, learn how to use it. Um, it, it it's, it's not the time expense that you think it is. You need to put a bit into getting it going and then it will save you time for the rest of your life. It will do a better job than you, guaranteed. <laughs> it doesn't forget. And uh, yeah, we think it's, it's, it's something we're passionate about. And we've never seen someone properly implement CRM and not have it change their life. There we go. And Craig, and Dennis, Craig and Dennis, on behalf of VBN, I uh, thank you very, very much. I'm going to stop recording now, but uh, online VBN members, don't go away. <laughs>